what is in store for this year's 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Could it be a record breaker? Hello friends, Jim here. Well, will it? Here's a uh, photo of a nice hurricane there. Well, meteorologists are using a whole variety of uh, adjectives to describe what the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season could possibly bring. Some of them are ominous and unsettling. So NOAA are predicting an above average season of between 17 and 25 named storms with eight to 13 becoming hurricanes, including four to seven major ones. This 70% confident in those ranges. It is a quote unquote, perfect storm of near record warm ocean temperatures in the Atlantic. The development of La Nina conditions in the Pacific and reduced Atlantic trade winds with less wind shear. The wind shear is the interesting part that could make this hurricane season the most active of all time. Ouch, said Ben Kurtman, who's a professor of atmospheric sciences at the University of Miami Rosenstiel School of Marine Atmospheric Earth Science. We're seeing a shift in climate patterns in the Pacific. El Nino, which tends to increase vertical wind shear in the Atlantic, which then suppresses some hurricane development, is ending. Now, what's going on is, what's the, what does what goes on in the Pacific has anything to do with the Atlantic? Is uh, teleconnections. Because the atmosphere and the oceans are a linked system. They're a coupled system. So what happens in one place there affects another place. We're transitioning to La Nina, which does the opposite. It reduces the vertical wind shear in the Atlantic, allowing for more hurricane development. And with the, all the ocean heat that's there, you know, warm waters just fuel cyclonic storms. The other part of this perfect storm is that El Nino is actually having a delayed effect on Atlantic Ocean temperatures. That's because of the specific heat of water. It takes a lot longer to warm up, but it also takes a lot longer to cool down. So there's going to be a lag effect. Right? It's just like March is usually considered, in the Northern Hemisphere, the oceanic winter. Because it's taken that long for the oceans to cool down from the lowest light levels that are typically found in November and January. Likewise, September is the oceanic summer, Northern Hemisphere, because it takes all the time from the June-July heating to warm up the waters. So that's basic. There's a lot going on here. That's what's going on. Even though we're transitioning to La Nina conditions in the Pacific, ocean temperatures in the Atlantic are still responding to El Nino and have remained warm. And that's the ideal fuel for hurricanes. NOAA's forecast follows a 2023 Atlantic hurricane season that ranks fourth for the most named storm, 20 of them, in a year since 1950. Yet few storms made landfall that season. Goodness. That's a good thing. And only one hurricane, Idalia, struck the U.S. slamming into North Florida and parts of the southeast coast with powerful winds and storm surges. That was mostly due to the Azores High, which is a quasi-stationary high-pressure system over the subtropical Atlantic being much weaker than normal. So the steering current allowed storms to turn north rather quickly. Now, the Azores High is part of the North Atlantic Oscillation. And if you want the full uh, goods on what the NAO is all about, I did a video on that. Check it out if you haven't done so already. 
Perhaps we can thank El Nino somewhat for the lack of hurricane formation in the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico. That probably won't hold this year. Long-range models have consistently been showing high rainfall anomalies in the deep tropics during the peak months of the season. Although that doesn't specifically show or track hurricanes, the pattern and time of year is certainly suggestive. The likelihood of, of more storm landfalls only worsens the outlook for the 2024 hurricane season, which is typically uh, runs from June 1 to November 30. So there's a strong consensus of a rapid transition to La Nina this summer. El Nino is already decaying. La Nina tends to enhance uh, Atlantic hurricane activity and the tropical Atlantic is far warmer than it's been in recorded history for this time of year. In fact, the ocean heat content, yay, someone's looking at ocean heat content, average across the main development region where most tropical cyclones form already looks like mid-August. Right, what did I just say a few moments ago? S September is the oceanic summer. So if we're already seeing in June, which is supposed to be oceanic springtime, conditions leading up to oceanic summer ahead of schedule by like two months, what on earth will September situation look like? What will the ocean heat content in September look like? I would, this, this holds. And, you know, looking at the, whether it's NOAA or Copernicus, uh, satellite images of the SST, it's likely to hold. Expect some nasty storms like September, October, November. It wouldn't surprise me. So with an active Atlantic hurricane season predicted with an increased chance of more landfalling hurricanes, Rosenstiel School hurricane researchers will be busy. So Lynn Nick Shea is a professor of oceanography in the Department of Ocean Sciences. He studies warm water eddies that break off from the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico and supercharged hurricanes. And he's going to be hitting it hard. He's going to have a a whole bunch of what's called Electromagnetic Autonomous Profiling Explorer, or MAPEX, from C-130 uh, aircrafts, you know, in association with NOAA. And these floats are uh, adapted for hurricane data collection. So what will these MAPEX uh, do? They will measure ocean temperature, conductivity, and salinity as a function of pressure. And from that... You, Conductivity is how we actually calculate salinity. And then once you have the temperature and the salinity, you can calculate the density. So we'll measure current and current shear, which is important for understanding the processes such as upwelling and mixing. It's the ensuing air-sea fluxes or the heat and moisture transfer from the ocean to the atmosphere that we want to understand more of because that's what helps drive hurricane intensity changes. So they're looking at, you know, various uh, parameters to uh, gather more information, to better model, to better understand, to better project what's happening. Now, I want to say a word about this here, the warm water eddies. There are things called mesoscale eddies. If you look at satellite imagery, you know, enhanced imagery of the Gulf Stream, and remember the Gulf Stream arises in the Gulf of Mexico, you will see a whole bunch of eddies north and south of the main directed flow of the Gulf Stream that pinch off. Recent research has indicated that mesoscale eddies are instrumental, major factor in facilitating communication between the atmosphere and the ocean. In other words, 
the mesoscale eddies can take in the atmospheric heat into the ocean along with the CO2 and it can also move oceanic heat into the atmosphere. So how do you know which one is which? You look at the direction of rotation. If you look at the Gulf Stream, those eddies that pinch off north of the main directed flow, they tend to be cyclonic or counterclockwise. Well, counterclockwise gyros, let's face it, musical scale eddies are just mini gyros. They tend to have a divergent zone in the middle, so there is an upwelling. So the counterclockwise eddies tend to move material, heat, whatever, from the ocean to the atmosphere. Conversely, on the southern side of the main directed Gulf Stream flow, the mesoscale eddies, the little mini gyros, tend to be clockwise or anticyclonic. And there is a convergence zone in the middle with a downwelling. These mesoscale eddies take heat, CO2, from the atmosphere and put it into the ocean. So like everything else, you have to measure the flux rate from all these eddies. All right, which one's putting stuff into the atmosphere? Which one is drawing down stuff from the atmosphere? And you calculate a net. And I bet you that's that exactly what this guy is going to be doing. So, um, yeah, this is a, we might be in for one hell of a hurricane season in the Atlantic. Stay tuned. Talk to you soon.